to do the music on one of the weekends? Right? Folks, folks, we don't have a quorum yet, so we can actually vote on things, but we should really begin the meeting because we know others are coming and we have a fairly hefty agenda uh, and we have a budget discussion, which is what we normally have December of every year. So um, welcome to the December. Uh, is someone calling Marisol? Is that what we're going to do? Or? There it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them an email and say we are, when I hear it. Well. Welcome to the conference call, a service of www.freeconference.com. When you have entered your conference, please announce yourself. While in the conference, you may press 4 for a menu of features and options. Please enter your pre-assigned access code, followed by the pound sign now. Aren't quite, quite. Yeah, they quite can't hear it in Hoboken. Out of both sides. We couldn't hear Andrew, but we heard that thing from the Kevin. Sorry, we did not receive any digits of your access code. If you are using a rotary dial telephone, please hang up and call back using a touchtone telephone. Where do we do that from? If you are using a voice over internet service such as Vonage or Skype, we strongly advise calling back using a traditional long distance carrier. If you are using a cellular or mobile telephone, you may need to hold the buttons down somewhat longer in order for the touch tones to register with our equipment. If you are using a calling card, it may be that the calling card is trapping your digits, preventing us from receiving them, even if you can hear them. You may need to hang up and call back without using the calling card. Welcome to the conference call, a service of www.freeconference.com. When you have entered your conference, please announce yourself. While in the conference, you may press 4 for a menu of features and options. Please enter your pre-assigned access code, followed by the pound sign now. Sorry, we did not receive any digits of your access code. If you are using a rotary dial telephone, please hang up and call back using a touchtone telephone. If you are using a voice over internet service such as Vonage or Skype, we strongly advise calling back using a traditional long distance carrier. If you are using a cellular or mobile telephone, you may need to hold the buttons down somewhat longer in order for the touch tones to register with our equipment. If you are using a calling card, it may be that the calling card is trapping your digits preventing us from receiving them, Where? even if you can hear them. You may need to hang yes. up and Edith call back. Edith is stuck at an elevator. She just texts me. Oh. And Welcome she's to the conference off. call, a service she's of www.freeconference.com. When you have entered your conference, please so. announce yourself. While in the conference, you may press 4 for a menu of features and options. Please enter your pre-assigned access code, followed by the pound sign now. Ellen, did they dial in the access code? Sorry, we did not receive any digits of your access code. If you are using a rotary dial telephone, please hang up and call back using a touchtone telephone. If you are using a voice over internet service such as Vonage or Skype, we strongly advise calling back using a traditional long distance carrier. If you are using a cellular or mobile telephone, you may need to hold the buttons down somewhat longer in order for the touch tones to register with our equipment. If you are using we, a calling we really card, need to begin. it may be that the calling card is trapping your digits, preventing us from receiving them. You're not the only one, Ira. You Several people are not here yet because of that. Without using the calling card. What line were Welcome you on? to the conference call, a service of www.freeconference.com. When you have entered your conference, please announce yourself. While in the conference, you may press 4 for a menu yeah. of features and options. Please enter your pre-assigned access code, followed by the pound sign now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we should be at, we should have reached the budget discussion by then. So, thanks. So, can we start, Bill? Thank you for using our service. Well, if you have found this service Marisol useful, please invite family, friends, and business associates to use it also. Goodbye.
doesn't answer his cell phone either. Right. I might have wanted to do the meeting. I know he. <coughs> no, I know. I know he was in. I know he Where was in Brad? this morning. Um, here's what I want you to do. Dial Mitch. Am I That's okay. We're gonna. We have to begin. You don't have to give me a progress report. As long as she's not stuck in an elevator, I'm happy. And ask him to, he works with me, but not on these issues. And ask him to track them down for you. He sits next Can we begin, uh, Carol? Carol? We're having one right now. Um, I'm going to move it much closer. There we go. So welcome to the December... PCAC meeting. We're starting late because there are problems with the phone system, as you have heard. Um, I don't believe we have a quorum as of yet to uh, approve the agenda, so let me just move right into the chair's report. Um, it is with regret that we announce that Angela Belicio has moved on from PCAC after four years with us as an intern, transportation planner, and planning manager. She has joined the New York City Department of City Planning as a senior transit specialist. While we're sorry she's left, she's moved to a great position, and it's a fantastic opportunity to help the city function better. I know you join me in wishing Angela all the best and thanking her for her amazing work to update our image and bring PCAC into the social media age. Bradley Brashears has moved into Angela's position as planning manager, and the PCAC has posted a job listing for a new person to fill the transportation planner position. We hope to have a new staff member on board early this year, although we're not, well, next year, although we don't, in the new year, but of course we don't know how quickly this, uh, this is going to play out. We, we actually have, have um, some interviews scheduled next week. Oh, so we're, we're, starting to, we're starting to talk to, talk to people and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get somebody who can start quickly. Great. Um, the MTA's November 2017 financial plan including the proposed 2018 budget and projected financials through 2021 was presented to the MTA board last month. The November financial plan includes the impacts of lower fare and, fare and toll revenues and costs associated with the subway action plan, but does not differ greatly from the estimates presented in July. Um, obviously, this month is when the board will vote on the, uh, on the budget. Um, unfortunately, that means the financial plan assumes a 4% fare increase every two years. A number of observers, including several board members, have expressed concerns that riders will be priced out of using New York City Transit and the commuter railroads and um, are sort of pushing back and, and advocating for another funding source that will make it not necessary to do these every other year 4% fare increases. Um, Obviously, the result will be uh, what, what financing finally comes through. Um, I am sure that all of you have heard the news that the MTA is finally reaching agreement with the vendor for a new fare collection system, which will update the now 20 years past its prime Metro card. This system has largely been described as a replacement for the Metro card, but is in fact much more than just another fare card. For one thing, the fare collection system will, will be not only for New York City Transit, but will also be for the Long Island Railroad and Metro North. This paves the way for fare integration that goes beyond a simple printing of a monthly railroad pass on the back of a monthly met metro card. In addition, the new system envisions a future where most riders will use their own contactless credit or debit cards or even their NFC-equipped smartphone to pay for their travel. The MTA will produce cards for those who cannot or prefer not to use their own cards or phones, as well as for reduced fare riders, but the account-based system that will be created promises to make bus, commuter rail, and subway use a much more seamless process. You'll even be able to, to load whatever fare payment option you choose from your phone or from your home computer. So uh, obviously there will be machines for the MTA issued cards, but not for the other. Um, and it's expected banks will want to issue these because there, there will be so many transactions that will, that will be for, good for the bank. In early October, Governor Cuomo appointed a fixed New York City advisory panel, which is focusing on reducing congestion on the city streets while developing a continued MTA funding stream. Clearly, this sounds like the panel is tasked with developing proposals for a congestion pricing scheme to be introduced in the state's next legislative session. From what we're hearing, the system may have some elements of the Move New York plan, which the PCAC backed several years ago. But it's likely there will be more important differences as well. Um, and there's bonding issues um, 
that, that are involved in lowering the tolls on crossings that do not come to the central business district, and that, that might be an issue. Um, there's many other thorny issues yet to be resolved, but we want to make sure whatever emerges truly increases the resources available to the MTA and is not just substituting one funding source for another. It should be an additional funding source. That's what it's all about. As a result of the MTA board action in September, advertising of alcoholic beverages on MTA property will become a thing of, well, has become a thing of the past uh, once, once the uh, current um, contracts are, are up. The ban will be implemented through an immediate halt to new advertising and the removal of existing ads by the beginning of 2018. How this change will play out on Metro North remains to be seen. Unlike the MTA's other operating agencies, Metro North has partnerships with New Jersey Transit and the state of Connecticut, which both own rolling stock and facilities used in transporting Metro North passengers and some of them have bar cars. In addition, this change will not end the MTA's involvement in the sale of, el of alcoholic beverages, and the state of Connecticut has plans to add bar cars to New Haven Line trains. In other news about advertising, the MTA has, I'm sure everyone's heard this one, has, e has entered into a contract that will move advertising in stations and on trains away from printed posters and into the digital age. In late September, the MTA awarded Outfront Media the right to sell advertising space in subways, buses, and commuter railroads. The contract is for 10 years with a five-year option and will lead to the rollout of a new network of digital screens that will be everywhere, and I do mean everywhere, and will provide enhanced information as well for riders at stations and on trains and will likely increase advertising revenue. Although buses are included in the agreement, they will not receive the digital signs. So if you don't want digital signs, pouring into your brain, I guess the bus is the way to go. There will be a total of 14,000 digital screens in stations and on platforms, with over 35,000 additional screens in, tr in train cars. New York City Transit will receive more than 9,500 of the stationary screens, with over 2,000 of these being dedicated customer information screens, and with New York City Transit having the right to use 20% of the space or time on advertising screens for additional customer information. Uh, <clears throat> Outfront will also install 31,000 screens across 5,134 subway cars. Long Island Railroad stations will receive over 2,700 new screens, including over 1,750 customer information screens. The remaining stationary screens will mix advertising and customer communication. Over 3,300 screens will be installed on trains, with the Long Island Railroad also getting 20% of the time or space for communication with riders. On Metro North, there will be 1,200 digital customer information screens providing real-time info, as well as 350 advertising screens in stationary locations and 2,900 advertising screens on cars, again with 20% dedicated to um, service, uh, um, service updates and um, ongoing communication with riders. And I asked a question on the, about these screens, which is, are they light sensitive? Do they have... Uh, um, sensors that let them know when it's dark or bright in a, in a train car or outdoor, and the answer is yes, so. They will always be bright, obviously, and you will always be able to read them regardless of the light. Finally, there is good news for anyone that has ever struggled to find information on the MTA website. The MTA is working on many changes to the site that are aimed at improving its usability. We have had several meetings with those in charge of the project and are urging them to make the redesign a clean, structured site that efficiently moves users to an appropriate set of options based on their needs. Right now, it is really hard to get to the screen and the option you need. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, I'm, I've heard people say, I'm not dealing with this, and they just tune it off. Um, it's got to be much more user friendly. We'll continue to meet with those managing the project and be involved, involved as the design team creates prototypes for the future MTA web presence. Um, so let's move to the Chair's reports. Um, Jerry, I guess you're going to give the Long Island Railroad chair's report? Yeah, move to a mic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, in November, the Long Island Railroad tested a new signal system installed in Harold Interlocking in Queens that is necessary for east side access to be put into service. It's good that this work is moving forward, but east side access is severely delayed 
and fell even further behind this summer. The project is 75% complete, according to the assessment of Jana Lieber, the MTA's Chief Development Officer. The completion schedule has been rebaselined several times through the history of the project, and there are still management issues that could lead to further delays. In Mr. Lieber's words, there, are, there is too much process and too little ability to adapt quickly to changes in this project. The current December 2022 completion estimate assumes that Amtrak will provide staffing to allow work to proceed at a far more robust pace than has been the case to date. Our board representative, Ira Greenberg, observed in July that slow process on the work on the capital observed in July that slow process on work on the capital on the project's critical path. These are those elements that determine adherence to the project schedule would probably lead to consumption of all of the two years of the schedule's contingency included in the timetable for completing east side access. Mr. Lieber's solution to the problem is to create a project management organization team, which he compared to a centralized SWAT team that would have the power to address problems, make quick decisions, and break through roadblocks. In addition, LIRR management must get more involved in the project if it is to be completed successfully. Uh, these problems are serious enough on their own, but the east side access completion date also impacts the reconstruction of Amtrak's East River tunnels, which will not begin until Long Island Railroad trains can access the new Manhattan terminal. In the best case scenario, this requirement could delay the East River tunnel work until 2025. Uh, we are extremely concerned about this delay, and I have called for Amtrak to open its inspection records to provide assurance to riders that the tunnels remain safe for commuters. Uh, further complicating the situation is, is the work that was done in Penn Station this summer and the Penn Station work that remains. This summer's work was a major undertaking, but was completed well within the time allotted. The achievement was reached only through an all-hands approach by Amtrak forces, which included shifting of track personnel from across the Northeast Corridor, and left few resources to address other needs, among them the MTA's need for Amtrak assistance to complete the critical east side access work during July and August. It remains to be seen how future work will affect Amtrak resources critical for the MTA construction program. Uh, we received a handwritten response from the new Amtrak president and CEO, Richard Anderson, to our letter in which we expressed concern about Amtrak board chairman Board Chair Anthony Kosoa's statement that future long-term closures in Penn Station would be needed. Mr. Anderson's note to us didn't provide us with much concrete information, but it does show that he is sensitive to the concerns of riders that use Amtrak facilities and their representatives. Jerry? Yeah. You might want to highlight some things. We, we don't actually read the entire chair. Oh, okay. Because we've all gotten it. And okay, no, no worries. It just... But I do have a question about yep. something you raised. I have one, too. The, ca the council is raising questions. Uh, I heard you say that you think that um, the East River Tunnel work that's essential, uh, that Amtrak needs to do, might not begin until 2025. If the last I heard, all of us have heard, is that East Side Access is obviously 2022 or something like that, why wouldn't, th once that was, or, or let's give it an, even another year, 2023, why wouldn't the East River Tunnel work begin right after there, once you have the outlet upgrade? No, it should upgrade? start immediately thereafter, in fact. Yeah, I would I think. Was, yeah, um, we, don't, we don't know why Amtrak, but they, they, there, was they some, there was an indication that they might, might not start until 2025. I don't know why they would, why they would wait that, that long. Well, excuse me, I, I, now, do you know? There's parts of east side access that are not really east side access, and they, warn, they involve more Amtrak, the bypass yeah. work. Yeah. And although if you look at it, it seems that's what's going on. I'm told that that may get pushed back so that east side access could come online earlier. In other words, some of the stuff that won't be done on time might just involve the, the, the stuff that benefits the, the bypass tracks. And I think maybe Amtrak is waiting for everything to be finished that make, to be sure everything's finished in that area before they that do be. that. There's also, there's also issues with Penn Station. They may want to wait um, for some things in Penn Station. I don't know. Are we having someone from Amtrak come today? Yes. yes. Well, let's ask him. He's the gateway He's player, actually but, yeah. a person for the I, I, person I, I for know, gateway, but, but yeah. Uh, but he, I, well, gateway may be part of the problem. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think you're right, though, Ira. I but think it'd be they want Because there's a whole... Because that's what I've Jano said at the meetings is, is there's this whole complicated, I mean, so many things are going on, and it's what gets priority, uh, and the, and what they, they have staff available to do, 
they and would take each track out sequentially, one of one of four, it and so be. that really drags on if you're not starting till 2025. Oh, tell me it about would, it. Yeah. It's basically a year. Well, but you, you should not take it out. Well, once you have East Side Access open, it makes right. it easier. Well, yeah. Because then you have an alternative. Right. Yes. They are taking out three tracks. You're not on. You're not on. This is no good. You better switch it with another one. Three tracks are going are going to be worked on right after Jan after the hall, uh, New Year's. Yeah. Three and three in pen in, in Penn Station. Not right. This not one works. Not, not 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 three East River tunnels. Three, that would right. be no, no, that would be bad. Three <laughs> in Penn Station. <laughs> Jerry, anything else on the report that you want to highlight? We get the impression Amtrak really doesn't have a firm plan of what the hell they want to do. Uh, in this very room, maybe six months ago, there was a gentleman here from Amtrak, mm -hmm. and I remember him saying that the East River Tunnel work would start in 2019 because yep. my thought was, well, what's wrong with 2018? And now they're pushing it back, and it's like that was six months ago. They're saying 2019, and now all of a sudden it's getting pushed back. I really don't know whether it's the change in management over there. They're still trying to get a feel for finances of what they can do and when they can do it, but it's a, it's a major concern to us. Unless they determined that the in Penn Station work was more critical than the tunnel work, and they couldn't do them simultaneously, so they picked one. Well, that's why we had asked to get the records of their inspections of the tunnels, just so that we're assured that the tunnels are still safe, still in safe condition. I mean, these tunnels were damaged during Superstorm Sandy. How long ago was that? Four years, five years? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and nothing's been done then, and you're talking about pushing it out this much further. Now, I mean, everything, that, that's probably the most critical thing on the, on the report, so I think we can move on to the next. All right, thanks. Go ahead, Chris. I do have a question and a complaint a little bit at the same time, because I'm just getting this now. Um, this is for more of the Long Island Railroad, because, you know, Atlantic Avenue line was closed this weekend and is doing it again this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm a little disappointed of why there's no reroute for a person like a wheelchair or a walker, because, you see, nice to know they put the Q train, but, again, accessibility reroutes is not added in. I looked at it on the website. I have not seen it. And, you know, it's like it's really not professional. You know, lucky you have the ambassadors where Atlantic Avenue know what to do with ADA customers. It, they had to use their own intelligent mode, and I really do think they deserve a combination on that. So none of the signage that spoke about the Brooklyn branch being closed down for those two weeks. They make the announcement. An alternative ADA route. None. I'm not going to lie to you, Andrew. There was an issue after I left Saturday's meeting. There was an overload crowd on the Q train and the N and the R. After I left you on Saturday, it took me three hours to Which get were, home. by the way, all using the tunnel and not the bridge. But well, either the way, the, bridge, the issue yeah. was stated. It was overcrowded. Yeah. And the second thing is, thanks to, thanks, thank God the queue was running with the N in the tunnel. But again, they also forget that you can also take the 4 and 5 trains into Fulton Street and then take the A or the C train into Penn Station. They need to think of not just one way, but other options. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the Long Island Railroad report? All right, then we will move into the Metro North Commuter Council. Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, you you've got all the report. The, the most, well, on this first page, the most important thing is the slip, slippery rail conditions uh, on Metro North. Um, the flat wheels, so trains are running with shorter consists, and it's not going to be corrected until probably after the weekend. I guess they'll do some overtime up at Croton Harm and, and the other places to get the cars back in shape. Uh, I know the final leaves of my property finally fell down, so uh, I guess it's the worst of it is over. So uh, Metro North served the postseason games again for the Yankees, but unfortunately those who are New York Yankee fans didn't get the result they wanted. Um, the Hudson Valley, um, Hudson River Valley Greenway and Metro North are um, all held meetings about the Beacon Trail. Beacon Line was used to be the Maybrook Line that New Haven had to go from New Haven and connected across all of the Metro North lines in Westchester County. I mean, I'm sorry, above uh, Putnam and uh, Dutchess County, 
over to the Poughkeepsie Bridge, which is now the walkway over the Hudson. And so that, that should be an interesting uh, thing when they finally get it done. Mm -hmm. you know, the board approved the uh, station signage, uh, enhanced station initiative program to change the signs at, Penn, at Grand Central, some of the outlying stations, and also the, the Solari board equivalent up at Grand Central right now to bring it up to the uh, 21st century standards. The other system is obsolete. I observed the uh, busing operation at the at Harriman for the Port Jervis line on the first day and also at the uh, 90 Wet for the, uh, that was back in September and then a week later they did the service, uh, uh, bus service replacement for the Pascack Valley line and the, so the first day I was there, there were no announcements being made and I notified NJ Transit and it turns out Metro North was responsible for the PA not working, which they fixed. I went back the next day to see how it was working and apparently somebody at NJ Transit picked the wrong, pushed the wrong P button and they were playing the Port Jervis announcement on the Pascack Valley line. <laughs> yes, so I made another phone call and that got fixed. Uh, I did ride the bus a number of times, and it does take longer, but you know, maintenance has to get done, and that's the only way that they can do it, by shutting down the single track line. Um, we got new timetables on the, on the Port Jervis line, and we also got, because they finished the busing, uh, last winter NJ Transit ran what they call their enhanced weekend schedules which are really nothing other than regular weekend schedules when there's a snow condition. And it, it fails miserably as far as being able to get commuters to come to work. Um, people don't go to work in the snowstorm because they want to, they go because they have to. So I and other advocates spoke at NJ Transit board meetings and complained about this. And they listened to us and they had a, um, we actually had a, uh, we have an advocates group of people mostly from New Jersey, but Orrin gets an eye participate from New York, where we meet on a quarterly basis with the executive director. Those meetings, by the way, were initiated by Ronnie Hakem, who we are glad to have here with, at MTA, and the successes continue it. And so they decided that they would issue timetables for severe weather conditions. Do you have yours handy? If not, I'm just pushing on the screen. Wait, I have them. So anyway, they, for, they left out Atlantic City because their service is the same all the time, but they did issue these. They just came out yesterday. Uh, it's not what we wanted. Uh, we had advocated for them to take the regular weekday schedule and just identify certain trains which would operate, but they chose not to do it. They took the regular weekend schedule and they added, at least on the lines that I represent, Port Jervis and Pascack Valley, they added one extra train in the seven o'clock hour going in in the morning and one extra train coming outbound from Hoboken in the afternoon in the five o'clock hour. And they kept our, our two express trains that we have. So uh, we'll let them gonna go, let them run with this this year. How will the average, the normal everyday rider know well, they, they whether, promised, which schedule is in right. effect. Well, there's, two, there's level one and level two. Level one is up to about seven inches of snow, and they, they, they were wishy-washy about the whole thing. But they'll decide, and they'll notify through social media. They are on their Facebook page, and they'll, level, then they'll send out the email alerts like they always do for other things. And, uh, and of course, the, the uh, news media will be notified about it. Is but, it possible that they would run the severe weather schedule on the Port Jervis and Pascack Valley lines, but the normal service on the Northeast Corridor, for instance? I think it's going to be whatever they decide to run with, it's going to be system-wide. System-wide? Yeah, they oh. didn't think they could Even do it. Even though there could be snow yeah, up they, in it, the northern north country and southern New Jersey, no, not. No, no, no. So Atlantic City is on its own anyway. But uh, it just seems that that agency is inca incapable of, of doing, um, thinking outside the box. I mean, last week I was going into, this, into the city and my train was delayed, turned out to be 25 minutes because of a mechanical problem. So instead of taking another train and substituting it for that equipment and just sending it, they decided they had, well, they didn't say it, but what they wound up doing is keeping all the trains with the same crews in the same spot, not to mess up any of the rest of the operation. So we wound up getting to Secaucus almost a half an hour late. Um, um, any, any questions on Chris? Um, question that I didn't hear very clearly because he was going in and out on the mic regarding the Hudson line, but you said there's a public hearing. It was. It's, it's done. Okay. Can you explain a little bit what you said because I couldn't hear you very clearly. It's in, you have the report. You have it in the report. But let me answer your opinion then. 
What's, What's your, your opinion about the Hudson line? Because with that bri that famous bridge at Petiskey, and I'm saying it wrong, forgive me. A lot of there's been a lot of tourists, and a lot of tourist people going, you know, walking back and forth during the round when it's spring, when it yeah, comes President weekend. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, it's been I'm seeing, and this is a good thing I want to say, Randy. This is good. Is the ridership there has been a lot of people like to go there because it's like their peaceful moment there. Some people go there just, you know, to have fun, you know, just go over the bridge and enjoy the fresh air. But I'm still concerned about the safety concern of some of the edges that still you still have an edge gap open. Like if a wheelchair has to come off the train. You're talking and about a Poughkeepsie oh, station. Yes. yes, and all the stations on the Hudson line. Is there gonna, any new updates since then? I think we reported the Yonkers gap. Yes, um, yeah, we, have, we, we have reported that one, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we will we will now send them another communication saying it's check every station. If you say it's a problem at Poughkeepsie as well, there is a problem because my colleague from the my other hat has complained in to the MTA and M no disrespect to here, but MTA has not responded. The people who represent the Bronx into going into Yonkers. And they do sometimes use the Amtrak train there, and they are not going to be going there anymore because now they want to go to Penn now because they feel they're concerned of safety. Okay. So nothing against Metro North, but okay. I just want to make it clear. Um, they're not while, while we now have a quorum, could we have an approval of today's agenda? Great. No, no objections. Terrific. How about the minutes? Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? And if so, and you don't have any changes or additions, could we have a approval of the minutes as some Trudy, go ahead. Use your mic, please. It says that I said I the next phase. One second. I'm oh, 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 I'm get sorry. Go, 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 go. Where it says at the very end, the next phase is to go south. That's the next phase after 125th Street. It's not, in other words, the next phase after what we built is going up to 125th Street. Then... The so southward, yeah, and then yeah, going yeah, further. I, I see. I see some words are missing. Do we'll you, fix it. Yeah, and yes, it really should be sense. made clear because the next phase okay. that we now have the funding for Obvious. is definitely no, up to 125th. We, we get it. We lost 125th. Yeah, I know, well, I know, but that makes all the difference, and I don't want to be on record as okay. saying. Okay, we got it. Okay, Phil? so thank you. I would yeah, appreciate that. I think that, that is covered. Uh, if you immediately before the. 135 break where it then goes to T Mason. Uh, I was in there and I was talking about the 125th Street uh, track, whether that that's to be a junction or, and you said no. I mean, that's all in here. Yeah, the well, and something that Bill has, has and that Trudy have, it's not in there for some reason. Yeah, for some reason it didn't. I don't know what. Well, the since this copy, is, but we'll fix that. Since this is our permanent record, well, yeah. I would ask yeah. that it be reviewed before yeah. you send it out. Absolutely. I mean, just on a regular well, basis, the minutes, because we do. Uh, I think we lost it somehow. No, because if you recall, we had some problems with the TRC meeting yeah, we, we, minutes also. Yeah. It's not going to go out till it's been vetted. Thank you. All right, um, Bill, did you? You're done, right? But yes. All right. Um, so then can we now have an approval of the minutes as amended? Make a motion to approve with the corrections. Terrific. All right. Um, I'm going to summarize the transit council because this, this is very long. Um, if you've ridden the subways recently, I guess you've heard the attention everyone. Mm -hmm. It's no longer ladies and gentlemen. You're an everyone now. So that change is, uh, is likely to continue. Um, also, if you're using the subways, you will note that the subway action plan repairs are in full swing. There are GOs all over the place. Um, many 10 p.m. start. Well, yeah, yeah, 10 p.m. start. Um, I did raise the issue of is it 10 p.m. at the terminal or is it 10 p.m. in Midtown? And I was told it's supposedly 10 p.m. at the work site, which means that it would likely be. 9.15 or 9.30 at the end of a, of a line. So they have to change that signage, and they say that they will do that because that is misleading. Um, the Enhanced Station Initiative continues forward on the Astoria branch. Um, I, believe it or not, I was, I was way up the Hudson at a Thanksgiving dinner, and the next table over, people were saying, 
they were complaining about the enhanced station initiative. I mean, I can't even get away from that for a day. It was unbelievable. <laughs> then that party left, and the next party that sat down at that table were talking about the Clark Street tube work. This was not even in New York City. This was way north of New York City. No. This was just unbelievable. But work, work is ongoing, obviously. You probably heard the RPA's now infamous suggestion to shut down the subways from Monday to Thursday evenings. Um, for a moment, the mayor and the governor were united, um, which was amazing. The RPA was able to unite what the two elected officials, which in, in a hell no, uh, which you did not expect to see. And the chairman has also echoed that was, would be a terrible idea. And Mitchell Moss of NYU said it was an elitist proposal. There are some interesting proposals in the RPA, but of course it's all been eclipsed by this. Uh, by, by this. So um, work continues, um, and supposedly New York Transit is New York City Transit is endeavoring to not have parallel work going on like they did one weekend, for instance, north of Columbus Circle. You couldn't get on the number one northbound, and the, the uptown trains on the, on the C line were going express to 125th, which sort of put the Upper West Side totally out of anyone's reach unless you started at Times Square. So they're, they're looking, they're very sensitive towards that. There will be some additional service on the 2, 3, 7, N, Q, and W lines, likely in the shoulder periods, but that, that is coming. Um, Yes, well, I'm getting to that. Um, I'm sure everybody's seen the announcement of Andy Byford as the new New York City Transit president. He starts around the middle of January. He comes from the Toronto Transit Commission and has had stints at the Lo both London Underground and in Sydney Metro in, in um, Australia. So he certainly knows large systems, although Toronto is arguably the very Andrew, much smaller than any of the others. Andrew, wasn't he Bob Kiley's successor in London, so um, he might have learned a lot of stuff about. I don't know that he was Bob Kiley's successor. Oh, I thought he was. Yeah. I, don't I know, know when he had he was a relationship on. with Bob Kiley. He ran Bob three Kiley. lines in London. Yeah, what? he wasn't the whole head the whole of the thing. London system. Well, whatever it is, he, he, he interacted with Bob Kiley, I understand. Uh, um, I've heard transit advocates in the Toronto area say New York's gain is Toronto's loss, so that certainly yeah, bodes. Well, we will see. Um, um, there have been some open houses on uh, changes to the express bus network in Staten Island. Bill, Bill at Henderson here attended uh, one of those. Um, where, where's, what's the next step on those? Um, um, I think they're, uh, they're, they're looking, they're, Scott, they're did looking you go to, to any of those? Um, no. Okay. No, they're, they're looking to, I think they're, they're looking to finalize a, a plan for, for uh, new routes and, and, and implement the new routes fairly short, fairly shortly within the next, within the next year. Um, you know, it's mainly mainly uh, cutting you know cutting cutting the length of the routes down and uh, making sure that, that that buses either go to midtown or downtown downtown, but not both, which is something that takes up uh -huh. a lot of time on express buses in Manhattan, where they start off at they start off in Lower Manhattan and, and then end have up, to traverse Manhattan. end up at, yeah, yeah above Forty yeah. Second Street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a new dashboard on the MTA's website um, incorporating many of the elements that we have been advocating for. It now gives you um, excess travel time and excess wait time. You can actually see how your line is doing relevant to what it should be doing, which is a major step forward because now the metrics are from a rider's viewpoint and not necessarily just management viewpoint. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely check it out. Um, additional countdown clocks have been uh, made active on B division stations, the F, the M, um, the R, I mean, by the end of this year, the all J of the, train. and the J and the Z, and by the end of this year, all B division um, services will be, will have countdown clocks, which is great. And the Rockaway is the only one that's missing. Uh, yeah, the A in Manhattan does work, but uh, not all the way to the Rockaways, yeah. The A train is not online yet because they're doing reconstruction on the far Rockaway. Yeah, but I'm saying you, you can see the countdown clocks on the only A, for instance, if you're at J Street, for instance. If you're in on the C line from 168 to Euclid, to Euclid it only yeah. works from there. Yeah. I, um, Yvonne, to... did you want to say something? Yeah, well, are you going to put them at the ends of the stations uh, instead glad, of in the middle where I'm nobody glad gets you on? Asked. Um, a, so I've asked that very question, and the additional screens are awaiting the out front advertising initiative to kick in, which is likely going to happen in 2018. They are going to pay for the additional screens. I agree. The placement of the screens now 
with a few exceptions, there are some at the actual entrances, like at 81st Street, but um, at some of the others, it's, you'd have to walk half the platform to find out when. I agree. I agree. But, this, yes. This thing keeps on going. Am I on now? Yeah. Uh, the question that is in the minutes that was, uh, I, we still haven't gotten an answer to, about the possibility of having on the street before you go down, not just you know, that you have to go down the stairs and having any of that information, yes, especially... Yes, um, I, I was told that's coming. So is Christmas of 2018. No, that's, that's, but, that's very much on the radar. You know, you know how on the west side IRT and, and the Lex line, on the entrances have that little ticker going along under the ad that says good service? You, you've seen those? No, not at, not at any. They have it at where on the where on the ninety sixth and Lex. Um, uh, it's not at eighty sixth or seventy seventh. Well, anyway, those are now going to read you the arrival times of the next trains, so you will have an idea. You can go into a shoemaker, you can go get a cup of coffee, well, whatever. But the important thing is to have it at those stations that are also have a bus stop right near them, like seventy seventh Street, so you can make up your mind before you go downstairs and see that nothing's that you don't have to run up and down the stairs. Yep. So if you could make note that. I definitely will. And there is no streamer, I can tell you, at 77th Street. I don't even know what you're No, there about. isn't. There is no ticker there. You only there. have them, I believe, on the west side. I've seen them on the west side. I've seen it at 96 and But next, not but on the east side. Yeah. Andrew? 96 and 2nd, because that's where they have it. No, I'm talking about 96th and Lex. No. I think it's also no. um, just no, going. No, nothing yes. at 96th and Lex. Yes, I, and one of the entrances has a big one, ad, and under it has the ticker. Them. Do you know how many entrances there are there? Come on. Anyway, let's move on. Can I on. just go back to um, your, on those metrics that were done? I think it's important to note that it's they were a direct result of you and Ira and the PCAC advocating for people-centered metrics, um, as did the Transit Center. And so the um, it's that definitely was a, a step win. forward. Yeah, and we we, sh we should really thank Winton for helping put that in place. Helping, yeah. Winton, Winton and operations planning, but they yeah. all got on board, so that was nice. All right, so to move along, um, a real um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, paratransit issues at the MTA board. The MTA recently launched an e-hail app pilot which will allow paratransit users to electronically hail taxicabs on demand, similar to apps that are. You Uber and Lyft. Um, the app is being supported by Verifone, um, and um, obviously it will not accommodate everybody, but many paratransit riders uh, will appreciate an e-hail option. Um, we don't know exactly when the phase-in of that's going to happen, but it is definitely coming. Um, and riders will only be charged the transit fare for their ride as opposed to the current taxi fare, which, which is even a, a better benefit. So. Um, Let's see. Um, we have we attend an event commemorating the Strap Hangers campaign's 40 years of advocacy and honoring Gene Rushenoff for his contributions. As you know, Gene has had some health problems lately, and um, we wish Gene the best. And I will end that report there. Uh, if I can just jump in, we're we're uh, another thing that's 40 years old is us. Oh yeah. Uh, and in your in your packets in your pack, I wish I was 40 years old. Um, in, in your packets today, there's a there there's a draft of a, a, a of a basically a brochure uh, informational brochure that we produced, uh, telling some of the things that we've done. Um, we did this at 25 when PCAC was 25, and we've updated that and added added some of the things that have happened in the last 15 years. Please take a look at that and uh, let us know any comments before we, we go wide, as they say, go wide with it. It's not on the Internet or hasn't been distributed publicly, so we're, we're, and we can change this at any time. It's not a policy document. It's, it's just, a, it's just a, a list of the things we've done, and I think it's important to have and important to be able to give to people and uh, tell them a little, a little about what we are. Yes? I have to say, well, as I already look, I'm lo been looking at it when I was eating lunch. But question to ask? Um, no, no, this is, there's nothing wrong with it. I just have to, have to say it's nice and colorful, and you can see it. But the back page, I have to say this: we need more TRC pictures. <laughs> I need a, we need. No, no, no. I'm just yeah. saying because no, it is nothing against anyone, but it's not easy to get a whole group together with the TRC or sometimes Long Island Railroad. But I'm just saying. I remember when we did the Second Avenue downstairs, 
or if there's a way we can ever try to do a group picture at one of those meetings, it might show that who, who the people are because they see the names, but they don't see the face. And, and also for the PCAC staff as well. Uh, we do, we nice do have a staff it. picture, but it's hard to get all the members together. In fact, we, we lost three of them today to our phone problems. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Andrew, it's, it's hard to do. I cannot believe that you let something like this go out without any mention yeah. of the freedom ticket. Oh, is the freedom ticket where? Oh, oh, oh. We'll accept your apology oh, now, oh, Trudy. He, he just found it. <laughs> we were both looking for But it's really not, it's not in the, it's not in the, um, yeah. It's, 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 it's in, the in there, yeah, like Prego spaghetti the sauce, uh, you know. Look, this is for you. I mean, it's your baby. I would think you would want to highlight it more. So what, what is, what is it, the, um, it's a work in progress, in this document. Yeah, when, when do you want all comments finalized for this document? I was thinking if people could look over it it's over the, the break. It's in the timeline, Brad. And then it's, it's, the it's also in the text, too. Text. It's Where? in the text. There's a link to the website. We must be... If people want to look over it oh, over the holiday, oh, and then maybe after the first of the year, I'll send an email out to everybody, and I'll send yeah. an electronic copy as well. And then yeah. people can give me their responses. And yeah, I, 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 we think we're going, to be, we're going to be talking to a lot of legislators and other folks this, this spring, so we'd like, to have it, we'd like to have it ready for the legislative session and, and that kind of thing. All right. Yeah, if you could, yeah, you know, like by the end of the year, if you could get get comments back in, so we can get them, so we can get everything incorporated. All right, great. Um, let's go to. We we really need to move now. We have a few items, and we our speaker is here. So old business. Anyone have any items of old business? All right. How about new business? Seeing none, we will move to the budget discussion. Received electronically this. and and in hard copy of. Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I keep hitting the button and I hit it, hit, hit it twice. Uh, everyone should have received in, in electronically and also in hard copy uh, the budget budget for proposed budget for 2018. Um, we are, uh, you know, obviously we've had a lot of we've had a lot of movement around and we haven't some of the things we meant to do this year we have. We haven't been able to do because uh, things didn't happen at the MTA and, uh, and other places. Um, but we think that next year is going to be a is going to be a big year, and it has to be a big year because uh, we're moving toward a, a, the next capital program. Um, we don't have we don't have we don't have a 20-year needs program uh, put together yet. Uh, we want we want to be influential on that and make sure that make sure that things that that. Uh, that the 20 year needs that has developed is not is not too fiscally constrained and they they've done that the last couple of times and have cut down on on the number of things in their in their in their needs in the their list of needs uh, by by the amount of money they they think they have uh, unfortunately just because you take it off the list doesn't mean it's a need it's not a need anymore uh, it's still a need um, and we need to be aggressive in, in saying that that the, the system doesn't need Twenty-five billion dollars. The system needs forty billion dollars, and we need to, we we have to have the um, the state help us out in paying for that uh, because the feds don't look like they're 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 going to be doing as much anymore. Um, so we are you know we are looking to we are looking to convene groups of stakeholders and do a lot of research, do a lot of do a lot of work on on the data that's available that's newly available from from the MTA. And prove that that there is that there that there is a need to fund the fund the system, or else the system is going to start falling apart as it already has. Is it your intention um, that we that groups of us would go to Albany to? Uh, I think we should. I, I I think that's that should be one that should be one avenue of attack. We have not got. We have we don't have a session calendar yet, uh, but we know we know starting in in mid January there's going to be opportunities to get up there and and talk about. Talk about budgets and talk about talk about um, the needs of the MTA and and what 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 requirements the MTA has in terms of resources. So um, anyone January, who can, huh? yeah, you know, it's it's fun. It's, 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 it's um, I mean, when when we did the thought 
leader tables with ULI yeah. last time, uh, there was consensus among all these top leaders that yeah. 50 billion is more closer to the right number than the 28 or 32 billion that the MTA shoots for. And so now that's been proven out a bit by what's happening on the system. So how much um, harder we're going to have to push and, and try and get to closer to that yeah. number. Yeah, and, and, and in sort of in recognition of that, we're putting it, we're, the, the two big items in our, in our proposed budgets are consultants, which largely pays for, largely pays for a, lot of the, a lot of the data acquisition and, and, and uh, formatting and analysis that we're, that we're doing uh, with this sort of fire hose of data that's coming to us from MTA. And um, and al and also pays for pays for people like Sean or intern uh, who who help us out in in, in these projects, um, and then the other thing is conferences, trainings, and events, which does a couple of things. One, it it provides continuing edu education and professional development for the staff, but it also will pay for any events that we that we choose to to hold, like. Roundtables of of of, state, of influential stakeholders to try to get try to um, get a get a movement toward toward uh, fully funding the MTA together, and and I think that those those two things are critical. Um, other things are, are largely where they where they were in the, in the past. Um, you know we've taken our, our commuter council meetings up a little bit because the restaurants are starting to to raise the prices and we're spending a little bit more on on food. Um, we've taken printing and advertising down a little bit because we just don't do as much printing as we used to um, because most things are electronically distributed and even when we do print something we often print it on demand instead of printing 5,000 copies we'll print uh, 200 copies to start with and then we'll print, print on demand what we need to print um, but you know largely we're largely we were where we were last year um, and I ask a question? we'll be doing the kind of things we expected to do this year that got sort of <coughs> sidetracked by the change in leadership at the MTA. Was, was this current year's budget what we asked for, or was that just what we got? It's essentially what we got. Most of uh, uh, the way... Do you remember what the ask was? Because it looks like from this document that we're actually asking for less than we got, we, uh, the, than the, we did last time. The difference, the difference in the... Uh, we are... Our, proposed budget is lower than it was last time but that's mainly due to a restructuring of how they how they costed out our, our staff benefits um, staff benefits are very strange at the MTA they they miss by a factor of 50 percent one side one side or the other on their budgeted versus actuals um, and and it really doesn't they basically that stuff is not doesn't come out of our bank account it's paid out of MTA. It really doesn't affect us. But I put the numbers in there just so, just to let you know what what the what the MTA is spending on us, uh, on the staff. Um, that accounts for the difference in the difference. Our our actual compensation is moving. It moves upward very slightly. It's a couple of percent. Couple. Of, it goes up a couple of percent a year, uh, basically, as the other consultant. Um, they they. Put a put a general price increase for consultants in in place, and uh, I think that was two percent last year. And so, it so our our, our this, number this moves would up set a precedent 2%. for them to give less each year if we're asking for less. No, no, because it's 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 very specific. Where if you notice, our staff salaries number has go, ha, is going up is, is going up. Um, OTPS, yeah. doesn't it? Isn't that what it is? And yeah, so it's in it's, their it, estimations that their, their it esti varies yeah, so and, and wildly. What they, one of the things they did is um, they were estimating a very high amount for for um, for medical medical ca uh, medical insurance uh, hospitalization med and medical insurance for us, and they cut that back last last year. So I mean that that made a big that made a big difference. Uh, you know you can see it was a uh, 2017 was was 195 thousand. Um, it's 100 161. Yeah. But it's an across the board percentage that they increase it. Yeah, it's it, it, I, I I I'm, I don't think I'd even want to go that far. I have no idea how the MTA comes up with those estimates. Uh, there does not seem to be any recognizable pattern to them. Um, because we don't pay them, I don't ask a whole lot of questions. Let's put it that way. Okay.
Go ahead. Because I'm looking at this math here. It looks like you're getting a decreasement. Yes. Instead of increase. Should you be yeah. increasing? Well, as I said, Chris, the, 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 where, the, where the budget is decreasing is in fringe benefit, the fringe benefits that are paid by the MTA. And we weren't actually spending that much, as much as was budgeted. They just had a very high number budgeted. But it also plays into every new person that comes in, the tier that they're in changes. So Angela leaving yeah. could be have made a difference in that number also. So yeah. I, I think that it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't affect. Angela leaving, Angela leaving was, you know, something we didn't expect. And right. we knew we weren't going to fill I just mean in the benefit, estimating the benefit, her, she may have had more right, expensive. Right, but, but for asking, yeah. for, well, actually the personnel is up, so that's not, yeah. that's not an issue. No. Okay. Yeah. My question is, I'm looking at the salary area. How can your salary go? Well, it's actually going up, but because we didn't, because we didn't have, we, we aren't going to have people working for us, a full staff of people Sub working for us now. for the whole year, we're down for the year. We're going to end up. We're going to end up around. We're probably going to end up a little over four hundred thousand dollars for the year against a four seventy budget, four sixty nine, three twenty budget. Uh, um, Angela ha hasn't worked here since the end of the end of September, so that's three months she wasn't being paid. We have another. We have another half time position that we have not filled that has that isn't being paid. So uh, you know we're it's it we haven't spent as much as as the budgeted amount for that, but that's not. That's a, that's pretty common throughout the MTA, especially with the number of people that are that are leaving leaving various parts of it. Uh, that there are unfilled uh, uh, open positions that are that are uh, so this, consuming less salary than just, they expect. Just for the record, so that means you guys are getting increase. We are, we, uh, yeah. It's a the, there's a two percent there there is a two percent increase built into the MTA budget um, for non-represented personnel, which is you know non-union personnel. Which we fully expect, uh, after some after some vigorous discussions the last few years, we fully expect that to be given to the people who are working for PCAC. So we expect that will that will go up, and we'll retain you know we'll retain our base, our base and our base staffing with the, with with our with our staff. And um, that's you know any uh, I mean are there other questions on any other questions on the proposed 2018. PCAC budget. We do need one. I second it. All right. We've had discussion. All those in favor of the proposed budget? Aye. Anyone in opposition? All right. Thank you all. Um, we uh, now to the, uh, the main item. Um, we really need to speak about the gateway plan and what it's a uh, effects will likely be on Metro North, Long Island Railroad, and of course even New Jersey Transit users. Uh, so here to discuss this is Craig Schultz, who is the Gateway Program Communications um, lead for Amtrak. So Mr. Schultz, if you would step up here. Thank you so much for joining us. We're keenly interested in this project. Ellen, you want to put Mr. Schultz's mic on? I see it on the wall over there, but it doesn't go on the screen. Okay, that's all right. There's a, there's a thingy over here, too. Okay. Okay, can you hear me okay now? Okay. Um, yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for having me uh, here today. Um, my name is Craig Schultz. I'm, uh, I handle uh, communications and outreach uh, for Amtrak's Gateway Program team here in New York. Um, I've been with Amtrak about five years, and I'm very happy to be here today to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Gateway Program and um, its impact on MTA and some of the MTA uh, properties. Um, 
you know, just sort of high level, I guess, let me just sort of walk you through the plan here for today. I'll give you a little bit of a sort of briefing update on, on Gateway and a little background on what it is, um, an update on some of the projects, some of the key projects that are already underway and, and that you've likely heard about, uh, in, in, you know, uh, most prominently in the news and whatnot, and then um, talk a little bit also about, like I said, how uh, Gateway touches and affects the MTA. Um, we refer to Gateway as the most urgent infrastructure program in America. Um, a lot of this is probably, uh, you know, uh, secondhand or, uh, you know, kind of old hat here for you guys. But uh, the busiest section of the Northeast Corridor here, of course, is between Newark, New Jersey and New York Penn Station, the 10-mile stretch there, uh, about 450 trains a day, 200,000 passengers, uh, where most of the Northeast Corridor is a three- or four-track railroad. Here at the busiest section, it's literally just a two-track bottleneck. Um, and of course, those two tracks cross through, uh, cross under the, the Hudson River through the North River Tunnel, uh, over the Hackensack River, the Portal Bridge, and other infrastructure that dates back to the early 1900s. So, uh, you know, we have the combination of the busiest section of railroad, a two track bottleneck, uh, very heavy demand, um, and basically all that adds up to uh, an increase in risk to 10% of the nation's gross domestic product, which is uh, generated here in the New York, New Jersey region. And of course, um, Superstorm. Sandy accelerated. So this was all true. All these things were true that this, age, this infrastructure was aging and we had these capacity constraints uh, all before Superstorm Sandy hit. And of course, then in 2012, Superstorm Sandy really ratcheted up the urgency uh, around the need to replace uh, and renew some of these assets. Um, of course, the main driver of the urgency here is the Hudson River Tunnel, the North River Tunnel, uh, as it's known. Um, you know, you've likely heard the, uh, we, we run about 24 trains an hour in the peak direction currently with the two tubes. Uh, you know, at, as I assume you guys all know, it's just two tracks there on the west side of the, the Penn Station plant out to New Jersey. Uh, with, one, with only one of those two tubes in service, we go from 24 trains an hour down to six. Uh, total that includes Amtrak and New Jersey Transit uh, and of course that would just be a devastating uh, outcome for the region you know the, the economic implications of that I don't think I have to, to explain to you all um, Gateway is a series of projects it's not just a tunnel and a bridge uh, it's about eight nine uh, individual projects between Newark Penn and New York Penn um, you can see them arrayed here, and I'll talk about them in a little bit more detail here in a second. But we think about it, and we sort of frame it in two phases. Phase one uh, being the Hudson Tunnel Project and the Portal North Bridge Project. Uh, and they are really resiliency projects uh, designed and intended to preserve the existing level of service that, that we have today. Uh, and then the, the later phase, phase two projects, are really about capacity uh, in improvements. And, and importantly, that includes the expansion of Penn Station itself, um, and then uh, associated improvements throughout New Jersey along the High Line, uh, replacing the Sawtooth Bridge and the fourth track in Harrison, um, adding a second portal bridge to the south, which would be a second two-track bridge, uh, improvements to Secaucus Station, and then another important element is the Secaucus Bergen Loop, uh, which again I'll talk about here in a second, but uh, will have significant um, advantages for especially Metro North passengers up in the, in the northwest, west of Hudson services. Um, so Gateway will really benefit the entire region. I sort of, you know, summarized a few places where Gateway, MTA, and Amtrak kind of all intersect. Uh, of course, there's Penn Station and the future Moynihan train hall, uh, and we have the second phase or the continuation of the Penn Renewal Project that'll be kicking, um, uh, kicking into to gear here in January, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, out on the west side yard where Long Island Railroad stores its trains during the day and then brings them into the station, we have a very big project, important project, the Hudson Yards Concrete Casing. Um, we're doing a lot of coordination with Long Island Railroad on that. Uh, the East River Tunnel, of course, integral to the whole Long Island Railroad uh, operating plan. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. We do a lot of work with and, and um, coordination on resiliency projects, it's like projects like the River to River Rail Resiliency. Um, and, uh, and coordinate all these things really uh, on a very practical logistical level in terms of construction staging, manpower availability and whatnot uh, with all of the, the various railroads and, and agencies here in, in New York and New Jersey. Um, because obviously there's a lot of work to be done, very, conf very confined space and, and a lot of demand on everybody's um, resources and awareness really. So very important. Uh, Gateway will build future capacity as I mentioned at Penn Station and that in addition to the Eastside Access Project could open slots of course for additional MTA service. 
uh, one of those services may very well be the Bergen Loop um, uh, introduction of additional service from Metro North, Port Jervis, and Pascack Valley lines coming down from, uh, from Rockland and Orange counties. Um, and then uh, the, um, you know, sort of the, the implications of not doing Gateway are uh, pretty um, significant. The, the likely impact on really all the various modes of trans-Hudson commuting would be pretty uh, significant. Um, really, uh, all the transportation modes, I think, you know, throughout the region, it's been demonstrated, would, would uh, experience congestion, crowding, uh, and basically a degradation in the customer experience and service uh, should we fail to address this very pressing need. Um, so a little bit about the various projects, uh, you know, just briefly the Hudson Tunnel project. Uh, the main idea here, uh, as I said, we just have the two tracks that, that connect New York with the rest of North America there uh, to the west. Uh, so the idea with the Hudson Tunnel project, in order to replace the, the 207 year old tubes, uh, they really need to be rebuilt from the inside out comprehensively, which you can't do on nights and weekends. It really requires a comprehensive shutdown of the tunnel. Uh, the MTA, of course, is very familiar with this kind of scenario. So the problem here is that there really is no good alternative. So the, the plan for the Hudson Tunnel project is to build the, um, the uh, what we call sort of a detour tunnel, essentially, to build a new tunnel under the river connected to Penn Station, shift the existing traffic into the new tunnel so that we can then go back and do the repairs that we need to do to the, to the North River Tunnel one tube at a time. Uh, this follows the arc alignment uh, almost exactly through New Jersey and then begins to diverge around mid-river in, in, uh, under the, the Hudson River, of course, because the arc, pro the arc alignment was going to a new station north of Penn Station um, under uh, the Macy's, you know, under Macy's, 34th Street, uh, this is going into Penn Station. So our alignment begins to diverge a little bit uh, under the river. Um, in terms of the, the project and the status of the project, we're in the environmental phase. We're, we're going through a very aggressive two-year schedule uh, for the environmental impact statement on the Hudson Tunnel project. That's about half the time typical for a project of this magnitude. Um, we're on schedule to release the, the, the final environmental impact statement and record of decision in spring of 2018, which of course will be a major milestone. Um, and then, of course, from that point, then it's a matter of lining up funding and making sure that we have all the contract packaging and everything ready because once we have our environmental clearance and a record of decision, the project can advance. Uh, in terms of the financial plan, and that's really kind of where the rubber hits the road here, this is very much in development. We've submitted a preliminary plan as part of a rating package to the FTA uh, earlier this year. Um, as, you, as you likely know, the project is about a $12.9 billion project for both the, um, the construction of the new tunnel as well as the rehab of the existing. Uh, it's been accepted into project development uh, for the FTA's New Starts program. So uh, we're looking for uh, under the 50-50 split that, that has been pretty well documented. Uh, we're looking for about 50% of the funding from the FTA New Starts grant and then the other 50% coming from the local partners. Um, the state of New York, the states of New York and New Jersey have made a commitment of $2.7 billion through the Port Authority's 10-year capital plan. Um, and uh, the rest of that 50% uh, is very much a subject of discussion right now, and we're refining that, that financial plan as we go forward. Um, an important point that, that, that uh, I just wanted to highlight here, the Gateway Development Corporation, which is sort of an umbrella organization that all the agencies are working together under, uh, had issued a request for information over the summer uh, to engage the private sector and industry experts on um, basically looking for information on um, you know, project delivery, risk allocation, and procurement methodologies and whatnot. We got a lot of very good responses, uh, and that's helping to inform our procurement and um, contract packaging, project delivery strategy here going forward. So we were very pleased with that. Um, the other phase one project that is uh, advancing is the Portal North Bridge project. Uh, in case you're not familiar, the Portal Bridge is also 107 years old, uh, spans the Hackensack River in New Jersey. Uh, swing Bridge rotates open on these giant archaic wheels when, when marine traffic uh, crosses through, you know, uh, comes up the river. Um, the plan here is about 23 or 24 feet off the river, so it's a very low clearance bridge. The plan here uh, is to replace this uh, structure with a high, uh, higher clearance 
fixed span bridge so that we no longer have to open and close the bridge. Uh, the problem is really when the bridge closes, uh, a lot of times we, we fail to get signal lock indication. And so, um, you know, you've heard stories about guys out there with sledgehammers literally banging the bridge into place, you know. So with the fixed span bridge, you can see the, um, the picture below there. Uh, it'll be much higher off the river, eliminate the need to open and close, much more reliable. It'll still also... Still just two tracks? Still just two tracks. Yeah, Portal North Bridge is a two-track bridge. Uh, Portal South in the later phases of Gateway put, builds the additional two tracks there. Um, it's really actually a function of um, the new bridge. Uh, the new bridge is, I think, 53 feet. It's almost, it's more than twice as high off the, off the water uh, as the current. Marine traffic? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know the, the answer to the boat size, but I, what I do know is that when they, uh, design, when they went through the design process for the bridge, uh, they did a comprehensive survey of, tra of boat traffic and, and projected into the future what that would look like, and the, the clearance was enough to satisfy. Uh, there really isn't a whole lot of boat traffic, actually, on the Hackensack River. It's essentially a sludge barge that goes back and forth. Um, but they did um, survey the marinas in there, and, or, you know, the, the various... Um, uh, facilities to make sure that it could accommodate anything going through the there. Queen Mary is not going up there. Right, that's right. I think you both said the same thing actually there, right. Um, so uh, the local funding commitment here for Portal Bridge is in place. We have 50% of the funding uh, in place between New Jersey Transit, uh, the Port Authority, um, and Amtrak, and then the uh, remaining 50%, again, um, we've, we've applied for and are working through the core capacity program at FTA uh, for, for those funds. Um, there has been $20 million um, appropriated and, and um, underway here uh, for early construction activity. We broke ground there. It was a very very fabulous day on Friday the 13th of October. Um, so the early construction work is underway and uh, we're, we're beginning the, uh, we're basically laying the foundation, building a finger pier, moving transmission poles and that kind of stuff uh, to make way for, uh, for the full construction of the bridge. And, and you are using some of the existing stuff that was started for ARC that was canceled? Yes, very much so. Wherever we can repurpose some of the work that was done under the ARC project, we've been looking to do and, that. And, gate, yeah. and Gateway Tunnel is going to take the NJ Transit trains as well as Amtrak. Yes, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, absolutely. Excuse me? Yeah. Why would MTA or, or New York State be involved with a bridge or paying for a bridge over the Hackensack River, which I assume is all in New Jersey? Uh, well, it, uh, the, the services that use the bridge is, are New Jersey Transit and Amtrak. Um, the, the structure, uh, you know, the, this is a regional program. Um, you know, the, uh, I think that you could make a pretty uh, strong case for uh, the workforce that, that um, Manhattan relies on and that New York very much relies on coming from New Jersey accessing those jobs. Um, uh, but... Oh, go one slide back. You'll see the funding is not New York State. Go another slide No, well, back. I'm sorry. He the said that not, I know what he said, but he's oh. wrong. The funding, there's no New York State funding involved yes. for the Portal well, Bridge. Except for Port Authority, arguably. Well, the Port Authority is a bi-state agency, yeah. and that yeah. has to be approved yeah. by both governors, but it's funded right. by both states. Right. And, and Did the I mishear uh, what you said, though? You said MTA funding also. No, no, no. FTA. Oh, FTA. FTA. Okay. No, I so mean, there uh, is no New York State money in yeah. this project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I, I it's not a stretch to, to, to easily see how many New Yorkers are traversing the Portal Bridge, either on Amtrak trains or New Jersey transit trains. They are. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing is, if you want to see chaos, constrain, constrain the number of New Jersey tra transit trains that they can run. Because it will it will mess up west of Hudson, it will mess up the LIRR, and it will push people into uh, on the buses to come to to come over to, to to New York, which is going to mess up the subways. So all those things are all those things have an impact on our on on MTA services. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood the question, but um, I hope I clarified yes. that a little bit. Um, 
Okay, so uh, on the Manhattan side, kind of moving for further east, uh, this is another project that's very much underway. Uh, this, do this picture doesn't look like this anymore. Uh, this is now, uh, there are skyscrapers pretty much everywhere you see here. Um, but I wanted to, to point this out. This is the Hudson Yards area, of course, Long Island Railroad's west side yard here, crucial to the Long Island Railroad's operation. Um, and uh, in the box to the left there, you see in the red, sections one and two, of our concrete casing, which we built basically underneath the related company's um, skyscrapers. You can see the picture there, sections one and two of this concrete casing, which is basically preserving the right-of-way uh, under this massive development. Um, the first two sections there are complete. We used about $235 million of Sandy Relief money with some local funding as well to complete section two. And now section three is the next piece, and uh, that is fully permitted and designed. We're doing a lot of coordination with Long Island Railroad. Road. We have they, um, the LIRR has an emergency services building there that, that uh, we need to relocate. Um, we're working very closely in a tri-party arrangement between uh, Amtrak, Long Island Railroad, the developer, uh, to um, expedite this construction as quickly as possible because, of course, Related is moving very quickly with their development, and they want to begin construction on the west side yard. So um, in the uh, – hey, let me see if I can um, get this little pointer here. The – uh, I did want to just sort of show you here. This, so this is the um, this is section three here in the yellow, as you see, and this is right where the Hudson Tunnel project will link up with, you know, coming across the river here. The new tunnel will come under a clip a little corner of block 675. This is at 11th Avenue and 31st Street, and then it links up to the Hudson t the Hudson Yards concrete casing right here under 30th Street, and then fits out the rest of the 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 casing because this is currently this is what it looks like. This is what it'll look like when it's finished. And then the Hudson Tunnel Project will come through there and fit it out with tracks and all the infrastructure that will make it an actual rail tunnel. Right now, it's basically just some people have joked about it's like the most expensive wine cellar in Manhattan. And, you know, um, but ultimately, you know, when all is said and done, it's going to be our, uh, it'll be the future Hudson River Tunnel. Is the construction of the concrete casing affecting the Long Island Railroad's operation in any way? Uh, no. So um, we moved as part of sections one and two. We relocated and then rebuilt the maintenance of equipment building. Um, you know, there was some obviously coordination on, b between the railroads on that. Uh, but no, in terms of, of revenue operations and everything, there's no impact on, on service as far as I'm aware of. It's not affected. Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, so, okay, so then continuing to the east, you know, of course, uh, one of the crucial elements of Gateway is expanding Penn Station itself. Um, I'm sure, you know, you're all familiar with, it, with Penn Station, opened in 1910, busiest station in the country, 650,000 plus people a day. Um, more people use Penn Station than the five regional airports combined. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the station really just wasn't designed to handle, as, you, as I'm sure you well know, the volume of traffic that it, that it currently handles today. Uh, historically, you can see the growth in traffic has really traditionally, or has really come from the commuters, Long Island Railroad, uh, back in the early uh, part of the 2000s, and then uh, New Jersey Transit especially, uh, where a lot of the, the commuter growth has been coming over the years, which is, uh, again, driving the need for, um, for the improvements to, to the west side of the plant. Um, of course, all of that traffic has taken quite a beat, you know, has uh, created quite a pounding on the infrastructure. Uh, and of course, we had our major uh, renewal program that, uh, that we conducted last summer. Uh, we rebuilt A interlocking and track 10 on the west side of the station successfully. Uh, and now that work is going to continue in, in, um, in uh, the new year, starting in January. We'll, we'll begin work on tracks 15 and 18, as well as three turnouts in C interlocking. Um, this is not going to be nearly as disruptive, we don't think, as the summer work. A lot of the work that, that will take place in this program will be done on the weekends, but there will be some service modifications. Uh, I believe the Long Island Railroad has yet to announce their, their modification yeah. plan. But uh, I can, uh, you may not be able to say it, but I can. Um, Amtrak and New Jersey Transit have, have put out their, sched their schedules for the construction period. The LIRR has said we'll get them when we get them. So that, that will... C you know, C interlocking what you will. is east of the station, correct? Thank you very much. Yes, C interlocking yeah. is on the east side of the station, right there. Um, 
I don't know if you can see it here, but, uh, but this is C interlocking right here. Of course, these are, uh, this is um, the west side of the station here, the Hudson Tunnel. Uh, and then um, this is the two, two, the two uh, um, you know, the, the tracks leading to the East River Tunnel here. So here's C interlocking and tracks 15 and 18 right here. Um, so uh, we will do all the same coordination. We are doing all the same coordination and communication with, the, with our partner agencies, uh, as you alluded to, because there will be some service modifications necessary. But of course, this is important work that has long been deferred and very important uh, to Amtrak and to all the users of Penn Station. So um, 15 and 18, yes, yes. Yeah, they're going to be rebuilt, basically, like Track 10 was uh, last, uh, last go around. Uh, okay, and then um, on the East River side, oh, I sent, oh, I got two, okay, there we go, sorry about that. Um, uh, the East River Tunnel, yeah, so um, similar to what happened on the Hudson River side, you know, uh, during Sandy, the East River Tunnel, two of the four tubes uh, were completely inundated with seawater. Um, you know, they are, again, in, uh, in need of, of comprehensive reconstruction, so the plan that we've developed and, and are continuing to work through is to um, essentially reconstruct uh, East River Tunnel Lines 1 and 2. Um, we have uh, proceeded through preliminary design and are now uh, working through final design. Um, this is a very big coordination effort that's gonna, that, that is taking and, and requires a tremendous amount of cooperation. Uh, we're doing that through the TriVenture Group with Amtrak, Long Island Railroad, and New Jersey Transit, doing a lot of operational analysis analysis and modeling of different scenarios. Uh, they most all involve interaction with east side access because, of course, that's a significant modification on the east side there. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, we're looking at about two years of um, outages per tube uh, to reconstruct all of the, the interior components, direct fixation track, uh, improve signals, security, et cetera. So um, something that we're very much uh, actively working on in, con in conjunction with our partners here today uh, for the East River Tunnel. This will be these will be two years of conti these are continuous outages. That's yeah. That's why the service impacts are going to be significant. And, and, and that's when, something when you that expect that, what do you use that? So it really does depend on when East Side Act. And sort of like it, a lot of the scenarios, they're there's basically they're looking at whether it makes the most sense to do it in 2021, 23, or 25 based on which parts of east side access have advanced at which point. Um, again, they're doing a lot of modeling and, and simulating to see what kinds of, you know, balance we could strike. But, I mean, it's just, you know, it's going to be a disruption. There's no question about that. Um, there, in the East River Tunnels, I have a little heart attack every time I come in from Long Island because I know the evacuation schema from those tunnels. And I know <coughs> the circular stairwells, mm. um, which obviously is not going to work for me. Uh, I'm concerned about whether there will be any improvement in emergency evacuation through any of this. <coughs> and also, whether um, in a the Amtrak platforms at Penn are an unmitigated disaster. Hmm. The Amtrak platforms? Amtrak. You mean just any of the platforms? The Every platform in Amtrak. Hmm. There's not a single good platform. We have tremendous gaps, and so that means ramps that are all too short. Hmm. There are lots of walls and additional new walls so that you can't get on the ramp right. in a lot of places and you can't get off the ramp. Mm. But at the same time, you can't get through the car to an other exit. Mm. I mean, I've, I've been in situations where they've had to move the train so I can get out of the train. Really? Um, well, so to answer your question about the East River Tunnel, uh, yes, the uh, the new um, the the design for the rebuilt tunnel will be improved with a high low bench wall. 
uh, which is different than it currently is. The, it's currently the, the bench walls are the same height on either side. Uh, so the high-low bench wall is designed specifically to Im uh, improve uh, emergency egress and access for first responders, et cetera. So uh, to answer the first part of your question, yes, the new tunnel design will have improved emergency security um, uh, features. As far as the, the platforms at the existing station, um, I, you know, I'm happy to talk to you. I, I'm, I, I will pass something. No, no, I don't, I'm not questioning, I'm not questioning you. I, I just want to say, I mean, I'm happy to take your contact information, pass it along to the right folks to make sure that, you know, that your, your experience is noted and at least they are aware of it, if not, you know, actively working to resolve it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, yes. And there are many reasons for, obviously, the, re the, you know, the state that Penn Station is in today. But, uh, but your point is well taken. It doesn't matter because it's ultimately... Right. Same platforms. Which is another excellent segue, actually. Thank you. Uh, the new station uh, will be the Moynihan station and will, importantly, have improved access for uh, passengers with disabilities already on the West End Concourse. You've seen, uh, you know, um, the, the, improve, the new entrances on either side of, uh, of um, 8th Avenue. Um, the uh, Moynihan will be the new uh, home of Amtrak in, in New York. We'll, we'll vacate our space in Penn Station um, and move across the street into, into Moynihan. That will free up space in the existing station to reprogram, uh, reallocate, um, you know, whether it's passenger uh, improvements or, or what have you, uh, retail improvements and, and the like. So, um, uh, and of course, Long Island Railroad uh, will be in Moynihan Station as well. And uh, we're doing, again, a lot of coordination with our partners at MTA on this design and fit out and working out the space requirements and everything in the new station. Um, just, just a quick question. Yeah. So since that is shifting westward, mm -hmm. all of the Amtrak service, and is west of 8th Avenue, um, do those platforms extend all the way to 9th Avenue or even beyond 9th Avenue, the, the existing platforms? Um, I, do, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing off the top of my head. I mean, I know obviously the platforms extend west of 8th Avenue sure. under Moynihan. I'm not sure if they reach 9th Avenue. I don't think they reach 9th Avenue. Um, yeah, I don't think they go that far. And they're not all the same. It is. That, well, that's correct. Moynihan does not, and that's an important, actually, it's an important point here. Moynihan does not do anything to address the, the track and platform configuration or capacity needs at Penn Station. Uh, it really is about the concourse level passenger experience kind of things. So it does not modify the platforms in any way. It really is a concourse improvement and a passenger well, my, my, experience my, my, improvement. Your words, not mine, but yes. <laughs> my, my point was that since you're moving things westward for at least the Amtrak portion of the users of Penn Station, <clears throat> stairs, elevators, escalators coming down are coming down on the very western end of the existing platforms. Correct. Um, are those existing platforms going to lose their narrowing as they get further? I mean, you, you have worked on A interlocking, so does, does that allowing platforms to get shifted any further or any further, you know, built any further west, or is that interlocking is the, obviously, the the limit. Yeah, so there's limitations yeah. there on the west side, right. Yeah. So um, the uh, under, well, w under Gateway, when we talk about expanding Penn Station, that's really where I think we'll look at the platform configuration. You know, um, Amtrak has done a lot of work on one particular concept as it relates to Penn Station uh, expansion, you know, so Penn, St Penn South. Um, but, the, but the expansion of the station will require its own full EIS. We'll have to evaluate a whole range of different alternatives. Um, but, uh, but that's really the, the vehicle through which the platform configuration will, will be addressed. I, I don't think it necessarily will um, modify the existing platforms all that much. There have been, there are a few proposed projects that have been kind of kicking around for a while to extend a couple of the lower platform tracks to the west. Uh, or maybe even to the e or platforms to the west or the east to accommodate some longer New Jersey transit trains. Um, but, uh, you know, n to be determined on, on those. Question? Yeah. 
And I'm going to use a similar as Edith, because my concern is the red caps. Will you guys have them right now, or oh, maybe in the near future? We need to have a better area in easy access. So when, when we have our train tickets to go into accessible area, and has the ticket does say disable on it, or veteran, whatever, as what anyone else will say, um, the concern is the red caps... We need to make sure where they're going to be, where the access is going to be easier, because right now, I'm sorry, your access where it is right now in Penn Station is inappropriate. Where in the, uh, in the don't like, say, don't even say it, because I know where it is, and forgive me when I say this, it's inappropriate. I either you can say what you want, but I don't like it. It's not, it's not to me feels the way you go in. Thank you. I'll take that word, but not the other way. I just don't like it because if I have to go to, on an Amtrak train and they don't pay attention, that's a different story. But the issue is where they put us, it's more walking and it's not right. If the elevator goes down to the next level, we should be closer to that elevator, to that entrance, to that area, so we can get down safely. Because we have to walk through everyone like we're going for a parade or not sure, making sure we don't get knocked down or hit. Right. We need to, you guys need to really think of, in the near future, more safety. Because I could tell you, Albany, for my opinion, and I, and I can't answer for Edith, because I know, Andrew, you're looking at me strangely right there, those eyes. Because nobody talks for anyone else, that's why. <laughs> I'm talking about me, for the record. Bill, please make sure you put that in. <laughs> Thank you. And as I said was, my concern is, when I was in a walker, I got knocked down. Not once, but twice. And trust me, I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital because it was hurting. The concern is we need better, better safety areas where you're going to put the red caps are. If you have two stations, fine. But me specifically Chris, needs to be Chris, near an elevator. Our yeah. speaker today is addressing pretty much the railroading and operational aspects of the gateway plan, not the kind of detail that you're actually getting into now. I'm still talking about the new procedure. But I, but I will say, though, actually, I mean, it, I, the new station, absolutely. The, that, those are the kinds of decisions, actually, that we're working through right now. We're, we're literally talking about, well, so where will the red caps go? And where will the Acela Lounge be? You know, we're working through those details now. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's fair to say that your, your point is well taken. Um, and I mean, while I can't promise you that you'll necessarily love it when it gets to Moynihan, I mean, I you know, but um, rest assured that's something that we're, that's very much on the radar and is, will be addressed. That's really, those are the kinds of things that Moynihan is really intended to improve, you know, in terms of the customer experience. And that's what we always like, as Andrew will say, we like to improve stuff. Right, Andrew? That's right. Um, okay, well, that, so that's pretty much everything I have. I just wanted to kind of close here on, again, because I do represent the Gateway program primarily. Um, you know, sort of the concepts behind Gateway. In the near term, Gateway is really about preserving and, uh, the, the existing level of service, creating resiliency and redundancy within the system. Um, and then in the later phases, Gateway is about building the capacity to essentially double service under the Hudson River uh, for both Amtrak and New Jersey Transit with its, um, you know, with its benefits for, for the, the wider region uh, pretty evident as well. Um, so that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions or Thank you. Um, Thank anything you else. Can you share that with us so that we can uh, sure. the PowerPoint? Uh, yeah. Copy oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I just it's all right that we can we when, can share really. Sure. You. When do you think a determination is going to be made as to what your time frame will be or Amtrak's time frame will be for uh, repair to the East River tunnels? You gave uh, three possible alternatives. When do you think the final decision would be made? Um, you know, I don't want to venture a guess because I don't know. I mean, I know that this is something that's being discussed at the highest levels of both organizations. Again, I think because of the potential disruption to service, um, and all really all of the railroads will, will be impacted by that, not just Long Island Railroad right. and Amtrak. New Jersey Transit uses the East they River Tunnel to, yeah. to access Sunnyside. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to say because I don't want to give you anything, okay. you know, that's incorrect. Um, but I do know that it is a priority.
priority for us at Amtrak. Um, you know, we are, uh, like I said, working very closely with our partners to try to get to, you know, try to answer the, 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 the tough questions now. Um, and, uh, you know, the sooner we can do it, the better, because it's Are all four tunnels in the same structural shape? Well, only two of the four were flooded during Sandy. Okay. So the two that were flooded were in the, the worst condition. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but um, you know, and, and of course, on the east side, we have a little bit more flexibility than on the west side, where we only have the two tracks. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So is it Amtrak's intention to still repair all four, though? Um, I believe so. Yeah, I believe that's the plan. The first two, obviously, taking the priority obviously. that were flooded. Edith. Yeah. Um, I'm always amazed to see the New Jersey Transit and the Amtrak in the yard as we come into, into Queens. Um, how many vehicles end up approximately, how many trains, okay, um, go back and forth to meet the different times of commutation? Would there be, I know that there was an issue with the um, New Jersey Transit Yards during Sandy with the flooding. Um, is there any consideration about moving some of that, I'm going to call it backup space, to the other side of the Hudson to minimize having to go so much back and forth? make any sense so in other words is the, the I just want to make sure I understand the question is the is New Jersey Transit considering storing more of their like daytime trains on the west side of the Hudson as opposed to thank in you sunny yes. side yeah it's a good question for for New Jersey Transit probably I mean um, one well, of but the it would impact on you because of the sure. amount of traffic you have going back and forth right that's no, the other clearly. I'm asking you. Um, I don't. I, I mean, I just don't want to speak for them because I don't know what their service plan is, and I don't want to, you know, tell you the wrong thing. But um, well, I think I, what I, here's what I will tell you. I know Sunnyside Yard is very much capacity constrained. It is, you know, bursting at the seams basically. Um, the 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 Gateway program um, also includes a rail yard for New Jersey Transit on the New Jersey side of the river. Um, how that yard would be used and, and what it would, what sort of spillover effect it might have on their existing operating plan, you know, throughout, like in the station and, and through to the yard. Um, I really don't know. I, I just, I'm not, a, I'm not an operations planner, you know. Um, but, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the biggest challenge really is just in, in, um, handling the volume of trains, right? I mean, it really is a function of space and slots and how many you can fit into, you know, the, the Hudson Tunnel and the, and the, uh, the East River Tunnel. Um, so I don't know. I'd, ha I'd have to check on that and get, and get you a better answer. Sure. I mean, to the extent that we can decrease any any traffic in any of the tunnels, obviously it opens up slots and space for, for the other carriers. Um, but again, I, I just don't know what their plan is for that. I have to. Most New Jersey transit trains, after coming to Penn Station, leave Penn Station and go back to New Jersey with carrying passengers. Yes, many do. Uh, not all. You know, a lot obviously go through to Sunnyside Yard as well. But um, but yes, many of them turn around and, and come out the station and through the west in side. In Gateway, where is the storage yard in New Jersey? To be determined. Yeah, it's just it's conceptual. It hasn't been uh, uh, determined just yet. The size of the yard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I honestly, I don't know like that, that we, I don't know that we've gotten to the to that level of detailed planning to know mm -hmm. what size yard they would need and all. They might know. I'm not sure, but um, at least in terms of like kind of gateway planning, we haven't sort of said that there will be you know 25 tracks or you know we yeah, haven't gotten that that, to that level yet. Yeah. Any other questions? In that case, thank you very much for the sure, presentation. Sure, no problem. Thank you for having me. Very informative. Any other business uh, anyone would like to bring up? Edith. I mean, you know, my, my commute here today was a total nightmare. I heard. What are we doing about things like intercoms? On the elevators. I mean, this has been 
I mean, if, if you push the button and you're trying to find out what the hell's going on downstairs and no one answers, or they answer and cut you this off. This was at 168th Street? 168, yeah. Hey, an improvement. I noticed at 177th, the button, the push button, how I know the elevator is in service, is actually lighting up. It's been years since they did that, since mm. it worked. Did you get the number of the elevator that you were in today, by any chance? 168th Street Elevator, there's only one. Only one, okay. There's uh, one. Okay. I will say we've, at, at, at Transit Riders Council, we have asked for, we've asked for uh, NYC Transit to come to us and, and talk to us about elevators, elevator and escalators, and they have not yet approved uh, You know, coming. I mean, the LIRR so is no better. In fact, the LIRR, a lot of places, has no intercom from the outside. I mean, I love it. I'm, there's a phone number. Thankfully, we all carry cell phones these days. But I remember having to write down the number, wheel to a uh, pay phone. How long were you in the elevator? No, I didn't get in the elevator. Oh, I see. That was okay. the issue. Okay. Then I had to turn around and wheel to 177th Street and sit there and wait for that elevator. So the elevator was just not working? Okay. It's not on the list. Okay. Yes. I'm actually on the MTA.info, and she's correct. It's not on the website, and again, it's lack of communication, again, because it's beginning to be annoying for even in my borough also, because this is getting really, forget, I'm sorry to say this, it's getting really pissing me off because it's, it's like, you know, it's like I'm at Bay Parkway on the D platform. The elevator's there, but it's not turned on, and it doesn't say it's out of service, and it's even worse. The... Ticket booth doesn't even know it's out until you have to tell them, and it's really a safety issue. Can we, as PCA, see to make a higher, stronger letter? Because since it's, it's technically Bradley, Bradley, you're pointing at something. Oh, I don't know. I got confused because you got me pointing. I'm sorry. Um, can we, as a PCA, see? Because I'm not just hearing from Bay Parkway. I'm hearing about Barkley on the Atlantic side of the LIR issue that I'm just getting right now that there is also an issue of clean, uh, I don't want to say because it it's disrespectful it's they're doing they're thinking the elevator is the bathroom again yeah and I want to say it that way yeah. unless someone else wants to say it a different way but I, I, I don't want to say it can we please as PCAC do something as a stronger we level? report every single thing that you folks tell us I'm tell I'm just you know I'm saying it is kind of Getting, getting to be the way it's but going. 168th Street shouldn't still be happening after all the attention. It's still going to go on. The, the work they did at 168th Street had nothing to do with the A elevator. Nothing to do with the elevator from the street to the mezzanine. Nothing at all. That work was all downstairs, underground, for the one train, which is inaccessible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I actually have a friend who called me from Barclay and ended up getting on the subway and coming to 34th Street because they were just, like, totally confused about where they were getting their train, et cetera, and they know Penn Station, they felt safer. Well, uh, last weekend no and this way. coming weekend, there is no Brooklyn service on the LIRR, so, because the, the yard work that's happening there. Any other business? If not... Have a wonderful holiday, everybody. Motion to, a motion to adjourn. Thank you so much. Oh, just came out.